Well, welcome to Unity of Salem and a very Merry Christmas to you. So glad you're here and a special welcome to all of those joining us online. Welcome as well. I invite you to join us in singing the first Noel. and Merry Christmas. I'm Reverend Patty, and it's my honor to welcome you here this evening, both in the sanctuary and those of you who are joining us online, um, especially those of you who are surprised to be online, um, surprised maybe that we had a little bit of weather that has kept you from coming down um, the hill and into the sanctuary. We're, it's just a joy that we can bring the service to you in this fashion. You know, Christmas is a time when we celebrate the birth of our great teacher, of the way shower, um, of Jesus, known as Jesus the Christ. At this time, we not only celebrate the birth of this child, we celebrate our own reawakening to that Christ consciousness within each and every one of us. And, and we celebrate the journey into that re reawakening. And that journey is represented by the Advent candles that we have been lighting over the past four weeks. And you will see we have them already lit this evening and have placed another candle in the center. And that candle is the Christ candle. And we will be using that this evening as part of our service. Um, and we'll be lighting it here shortly. Um, for some of you, you may want a little bit of context for our service because we're going to have a 12 Powers candle lighting service tonight. And, and the 12 Powers may be new to you, so, so let me give you just a little bit about them. Um, basically, they are power tools um, that we have within each and every one of us for being the best Christ that we can be. Um, Charles Fillmore, one of the co-founders of the Unity Movement, um, was really seeped in the teaching of the 12 powers and actually wrote a book about it called The 12 Powers of Man that was published in 1930. And Unity has, has published several books over the years by various artists. Um, and what I would say is important to know is these are not powers that are separate from us. They're not, um, you know, powers superpowers, magical powers that we can have out in the world. They are faculties of mind that are part of who I, of each and every one of us that play an aspect of who we are and how we show up in the world, um, either consciously or unconsciously. Um, and, and while, yes, we can focus on each of them individually, they really work together um, in oneness um, and, and don't I would highly recommend not overdeveloping one at the detriment to the others. 
Um, but, but truly tonight, we celebrate all 12 of them and the 12 apostles that um, in scripture represent these powers, these innate aspects, and, and give us examples of the roles that these powers can play in our lives. So just like Jesus, tonight we're calling our disciples, our 12 powers, to a higher expression. And we're doing that by following him and the way in which he walked this journey. So why don't we begin with prayer? Hmm. Sweet infinite spirit. For all that has been, for all that is right now present, for all that ever will be, we are truly grateful. More than anything, we are grateful for this moment. We are grateful for this gathering. We let go of any resistance and allow ourselves to be fully present right here in this now moment, this moment of pure possibility. Hmm. And we celebrate the potential of the Christ spirit within each and every one of us, within each and every individual around this planet. And with love and gratitude, we say, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. And we now light the Christ candle. I am the living God that is incarnate within each and every one of us. I am the living God. We celebrate the I am as represented in scripture by Jesus Christ.
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee and out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, <clears throat> unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. My name is Elizabeth, and tonight I represent the disciple Peter. I light this candle for the gift of faith. Faith is your ability to believe in yourself, no matter what the outer circumstances may seem to be. You may remember that Peter was originally called Simon, meaning hearing. We understand that listening to truth in a receptive state of mind opens the way for faith. Ultimately, faith dissolves our fears and restores our belief in ourselves and in the power of God to assist us in overcoming all obstacles. I will speak the affirmation that appears on the slide and then invite you to join me in affirming it together. Faith blesses my day and paves my way. Together. Faith blesses my day and paves my way.
My name is Sherry, and tonight I represent the disciple Andrew. I light this candle for the gift of strength. Strength is your ability to be resilient in the face of change, to not let anything disturb the calm peace of your soul. Imagine what it was like for Andrew, as a follower of John the Baptist, to be the first to discover Jesus. Non-resistance is the highest expression of strength. Strength is not rigidity, it is stability. It is not force. It is flexibility and resilience born of knowing that no matter what, all will be well. One of the first important ways that we discover our Christ potential is that we find that we are still standing after we have faced some formidable obstacles in our lives. And our affirmation, I have the strength to accomplish all that is mine to do. Together, I have the strength to accomplish all that is mine to do. My name is Conrad, and today I represent the disciple James, son of Zebedee. I light this candle for the gift of wisdom or judgment. Good judgment is your ability to discern wise choices, even when faced with confusion. When the James or judgment faculty is quickened, we access an inner knowing or wisdom that guides us even when the way forward seems dark and unclear. Your good judgment is something that you can always trust. Whatever is yours to meet today, go and meet it with good judgment. And our affirmation, I am guided by divine wisdom in every thought, word, and action. Together, I am guided by divine wisdom in every thought, word, and action.
I represent the disciple John. I light this candle for the gift of love. Love is the harmonizing, constructive power that binds the universe together. It was the disciple John who always stayed close to Jesus and felt connected to him at all times. Divine love casts out our fears and once again restores us to the awareness that God can never abandon us. God's love for us is unconditional and everlasting. And our affirmation, I am a radiating center of love. Together, I am a radiating center of love. Today I represent the disciple Philip. I light this candle for the gift of power. Power is your ability to have authority over your thoughts and feelings. Power gives you the capacity to say the right words, mean them, and see them carried out in action. So often we give our power away to circumstances and to other people. When we reclaim our power, we gain dominion over our own thoughts and feelings. It was to Philip that Jesus asked the question, how are we to feed 5,000 people? When faced with overwhelming odds, it is our power faculty that activates unlimited resources within us, and we find that all things are possible. If you feel yourself overwhelmed with the enormity of your problems today, know that all the power of God is within you. And our affirmation, I have the power to create my world. Together, I have the power to create my world. Today, I represent the disciple Bartholomew. I light this candle for the gift of imagination. Imagination is your ability to visualize the world as you would like it to be. With your imagination, you can see beyond your seeing and dream beyond your dreaming. Bartholomew entered into the upper room with the other disciples and saw the risen Christ. Imagination can see further, deeper, and clearer than any fact, circumstance, or opinion. At any moment, we can go into the upper room of our mind and there envision a fulfilling, prosperous, and healthy life. If you can't see any possibility of change in your life today, let your imagination take flight and see what God sees. I envision good unfolding in every area of my life. Together, I envision good unfolding in every area of my life.
I represent the disciple Thomas. I light the candle for the gift of understanding. Understanding is your ability to know what's, what stands under every manifestation. Nothing is what it appears to be. There is always an inner truth or gift that once discerned helps us to see and feel past circumstances. It was Thomas who at first doubted that Jesus has truly risen from the tomb. If you're struggling to understand why or how things are the way they are right now, call on God to help quicken your faculty of understanding. And our affirmation, my understanding of truth deepens and directs my life. Together, my understanding of truth deepens and directs my life. Today I represent the disciple Matthew. I light this candle for the gift of will. Will is the executive power of the mind, your ability to direct your life forward. When things seem to be on hold or when we seem to find ourselves trapped in circumstances, we have the will to keep on going. We are no longer willful, demanding our own way. Instead, we are willing to grow, to change, to strengthen the presence of God in our lives. When Jesus invited Matthew to follow him, he was willing to give up his old life and begin again. If your life is on hold right now, be willing to follow the call of God, and you will be led to a richer, fuller life adventure. And our affirmation, I choose my good based on spiritual understanding. Together, I choose, I choose my good, good based on spiritual understanding. Today, I represent James, the son of Alphaeus. I light this candle, and it did light, for order. Order is your ability to put God first in all that you think, say, and do. When you put God first, everything else works in an orderly way. This means that before you start your day, a project, a journey, or a relationship, you turn to God first. It was James, the son of Alphaeus, that Jesus took one of his first appearances after his resurrection. Before we see any evidence of good in our lives, we must be willing to put God first in our lives. And our affirmation, my life is in balance and in order and all is well. Together, my life is balanced and in order, and all is well.
Today I represent the disciple Simon. I light this candle for the gift of zeal. Zeal is your ability to put enthusiasm and energy into everything you do. Zeal is the affirmative impulse of the universe, energy in forward motion. It was Simon whom Jesus called a zealot. Zealots are those who have a cause about which they are highly enthusiastic. They are the cheerleaders of life, helping us to get excited about the possibilities of our lives. Simon was one of the last three disciples called by Jesus, demonstrating the importance of developing wisdom through the, through the other powers before activating zeal. And our affirmation? I enthusiastically accept my good and go forward to achieve my purpose. Together, I enthusiastically accept my good and go forward to achieve my purpose. Today I represent the disciple Thaddeus. I light this candle for the gift of elimination or renunciation. Renunciation is your ability to release, let go, and eliminate anything that no longer serves you. Renunciation is the no quality of the mind that puts an end to toxic thinking, to worry, fear, and limited ways of living. Renunciation allows us to forgive the past and begin again. It was Thaddeus whom Jesus sent out to teach and to cast out demons and heal the sick. It is this renunciatory ability in us that clears the way for a great growth. It helps us to remove the obstacles so that we can move forward confidently. And our affirmation, I release anything and everything that no longer serves my unfolding good. Together. I release anything and everything that no longer serves my unfolding good. Today, I represent the disciple Judas. I light this candle for the gift of life. Life is your ability to learn, grow, change, and become all that God created you to be. Life is not merely surviving, but enriching, creating, and energizing everything in your world. It was Judas who was instrumental in setting up the conditions through which Jesus proved that life is the only reality. Though sometimes we deny the Christ in us, we ultimately open ourselves to that which always creates new life and resurrection. And our affirmation, I am filled with life, sweet life, together. I am filled with life, sweet life.
And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. have been on a journey through the 12 powers um, in many ways this evening and I, I, I am feeling called to keep us moving in the service so what I'm going to do is make what I was going to do for the meditation I'm going to write it out and make it available for you online so you'll find it um, on Facebook over the next day or two so we're coming to that time in our service now where we use our power of imagination our power of strength our our will, we use everything that we have at our fingertips to support this ministry. And that's the offertory that we have with each and every service. So we're being called not only to give of our gifts to support this ministry, but to truly give the blessing um, and really feel the affirmation when we affirm this together. So as you Place in the palm of your hands your checks, the, the, the change, the cash, whatever it is that you're putting in the palm of your hands. Um, if it's using your imagination and seeing the mailbox and the checks that arrive by mail or pressing the donate button on our website, however these gifts arrive, we truly know that this is the bounty of God. And we bless it, affirming our offertory blessing together. Divine love flowing in, through, and as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Amen. I invite our ushers to come forward.
thank you. That, that song says Christmas to me every year. That's, that's the moment, the moment of magic in my heart. Um, so we're going to have our candle lighting part of our service. So before we get into that, I have a few things I need to go over with you. One, if yours is the one whose candle is lit, I invite you to hold it straight up and down. The one who's getting their candle lit can turn it sideways. That way the wax doesn't drip on you. And if you have your, your um, paper, you, when you stand it back up, when the wax does drip, it'll drip on the paper. Now I want you to look at the bottom of the candle. There's a gift. There's a gift for you on there. It's on there with a rubber band. I invite you to take that off. You don't want it to burn. You don't want it to get wax on it. It's an affirmation for you specifically chosen before you ever even walked in the door tonight. Does all that make sense? Joy, it's right on the bottom of your candle there with the rubber band. There's a little affirmation. So what's going to happen um, is I'm going to invite Alice to come forward and light her candle. Not right yet, though. And light her candle off of my candle. And she's then going to come down the aisles and help you to light yours. Does that make sense? And then I'll, I'm going to come help light you guys. Oh, you quit. Okay. She's ready to go. Okay. So I'm going to light my candle off the Christ candle and we will get started. Might, but it'll work. <laughs> Truly, as, as it gets darker, it gets brighter. You know, we are lighting up our world. As Jesus told us, we are the light of the world. This light that shines out from the sanctuary to become a beacon of light to the whole world as we experience it, we must remember that we are the light. It's now this is a representation. We are the light and that we are never separate from one another. For this Christ light glows in you, in each and every one of us right now. It is the light of your own spirit that never grows dim, for truly you are the light of the world. As we close our service, let us each extinguish our candles knowing that the light continues to shine within, blessing us, blessing the world, and making a difference. Now let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the gifts that Jesus Christ demonstrated, that our way shower, our brother, brought into the world and showed us how to live and be and express 
We are grateful for the rebirth of these gifts within each and every one of us, rekindling that light within our souls. Help us to carry this light, to carry it forward and illuminate the world. This Christmas, I let my light shine. This Christmas is the best Christmas for me. This Christmas, I make a difference and see the light in those around me. Thank you, God, for this gift. Thank you, God, for this new awareness. Thank you, God, for spiritual community where we come together to know the one presence, where we come together to celebrate the Christ light, to celebrate ourselves and each other. We give thanks as we pray this in the name of this beautiful Christ child, in the name of love, and so much more. Amen. Merry Christmas and blessings on this sacred night.